Okay, hi, Ronit. Can you see? Yeah, now it, it'll come up. Yeah, it's loading, so we should. So let's start with, uh, what do you want to start with? Uh, uh, well, the... with what you have up there, Ronit. Sorry, we so lost, a lot, the lost dollar? some of the audience during this, but go ahead and start with the dollar. Okay. Um, so I was actually showing you uh, the dollar cycles, why it's actually at a very critical point. Um, can you see the screen? I don't know if it's loaded. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Okay. So it. this is really a critical point where the dollar is, uh, you know, this is a cycle actually. So it's around five, 5.3 5 year cycle. And you can actually see here that after 1980 to 85, it went up same way, 1995 to 2000. And then uh, around 2008, it had a short uh, spike. And now actually it's around June, July, which is a very critical point. If it can actually take out that, probably uh, it can go much higher, probably 1985 highs or much higher. Now, the, the technical thing is how do you know it? So let's go, go on to some basic charts of uh, the US dollar. Yeah, so, those are pretty wild. Wild targets. So you're you're thinking? Yeah, uh, uh, I have a theory that. Uh, yeah, I have a theory that uh, anything which falls eighty percent, it can actually go up by uh, inverse of eighty percent. So if the low was seventy point eight, so if the current all currencies are going to fall against the US dollar, so what's a uh, uh, seventy point eight divided by point two, which is approximately three hundred and thirty seven. Uh, that's what I was showing you in the previous interview. Uh, what is the scale of uh, dollar rally? But it's 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 we we have to take it one one uh, point at a time, and why and how it will actually happen. So okay, so it start coming up. Uh, the dollar. This is a very extreme short term, but a monthly chart. Can you see it? Uh, we're looking at uh, yeah the one with the uh, oscillating magenta Correct. line. Yes. So uh, that's the one which is uh, which tells you that it's holding up around that 96 to uh, 199, 98.4 range. That's where uh, it's not like it's not broken out or broken down. So it's indecisive. Yes. Now, th now the problem here is that uh, in my previous interview when we actually discussed that after 103, it might test around 89, which is the lower point over here. Uh, we have to actually watch this July very critically because it's exactly at a point of 28, 28 years where there was a conflict, which was a Kuwaitian, um, you know, uh, embargo or oil crisis, which actually hit uh, most countries. So I'll, I'll come up with that when... Um, 28 years ago? Yeah, that's around 28 years ago. It was 1990, July. Okay, uh, that was the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, not Iran, Iraq. It was uh, Kuwait. I mean, I mean uh, Iraq had it was, it was Iraq into Kuwait. It That's was, right. Uh, Gulf War One. Yeah. So okay. there is a cycle which says that uh, uh, oil could actually uh, oil went up something like fifty percent per month, something like that. So from ten dollars, it spiked to around thirty dollars. We'll come up with that chart later. So for the dollar right now, what's the stats? So let's look at the euro, which is the highest weightage, which is around 57.6%. So it's actually, uh, this is the long-term chart. Can you see it over here? So, uh, so it's actually- the dollar. No? Still have the dollar. You may okay. have to unshare and then share again with a different chart, but you we're stuck on the dollar. Okay. Um, okay. So okay. slightly different. Can you see the euro? No. New share. I got to say new share, right? Yeah, it's still the dollar. Can you see it oh, now? Got it. Got it. So the euro is actually the highest weightage. So wherever the euro goes, the dollar goes, technically. Right, right. So uh, now the thing is that uh, 1.14, you see that the trend is actually cracked up, but it's not broken down. 
So the 1985 to 2000 trend is actually just holding up and most of the central banks are trying to hold this level. And uh, uh, this is where they decide that uh, there is a cycle wise, this is a very important point, if the euro goes up or breaks out or breaks down. Okay. So uh, the, uh, you got to watch something like 1.13 or 1.1. And uh, what are the similarities between July 2008 and uh, now is that the Euro Yen actually cracked in July 2008. And this could, uh, you know, have a repeat of that. So I'll come up with the next chart. Now, this is again the Euro, right? Yeah. Uh, new share, one minute. I'll new okay. share. So this will have the specific levels where it can crack and why, uh, what level it can actually break down. So can you see it? Yes. So on I'm the right hand side. You're pointing towards that uh, 85 cent level, 50%. That's right. So I assume that the euro would actually go down something like 90% if the dollar has to rally. I'm assuming it for the timing. So if it's actually in the range that 1.05, 1.09, this at the minute actually something happens over here 1.09 that's when everything just cracks up so it'll go down to something like 1985 in a very short period of time probably a couple of months or three months and it's a repeat of what we can see in july 2008 it actually when the uh, there was a uh, oil spike and euro uh, actually came down from 1.6 to 1.23 within something like three or four months I remember that. We're looking at a similar similar event. So the pressure point is something like 1.09, where you can assume that there is something going wrong, and the dollar would be actually above 98.5, roughly. So that's the equal weightage. Nice. Okay. Okay. okay, so let's go on to the next one. Now let's come to the second pair, which is the second highest weighted pair, which is uh, the GBP USD. I'll share it again. One yeah. minute. We have it. We have it. Uh, this is again a short term cycle. Can you see it? See it? Yeah, we have it. That's so right. the uh, the GBP USD was uh, around 2.6 in 1972, and there is a channel. The this is actually a GAN fan. So you can see that the 1985 trend has uh, already broken, and the trend which broke was the Brexit 2016. So it tried to retrace back, but there is a channel building over here. So this is where again the uh, probably the British pound, British problems start again, but it could go sideways. We just have to assume that uh, um, it doesn't uh, go above that 1.27. But if it cracks 1.25 or 1.24, then we say that uh, there is a problem, and uh, it's it's the same confluence that uh, the strengthening of the dollar. And uh, I'll just go on to the next chart. So this is the most interesting pair where uh, I'll show you a Swiss franc USD pair. Uh, can you see it now? Yes. I shared it. We're right there. Okay. So this is a very critical thing that uh, Swiss franc never actually went up. I mean, uh, never underperformed again the USD from 1972. So the last time it did was somewhere around 1985, 2000, and then now. So it's almost a parity. So I did hear that uh, Swiss central banks are actually um, buying up uh, assets and et cetera. But what if this whole trend is about to reverse? And this is part of the dollar strengthening. So a parity would say that this is a, another confluence or another uh, 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 checkpoint where you can say that the overall trend, secular trend of the dollar against all currencies it's going to go up. Okay, so let's move on to the next chart. Against all it's going to go up against all currencies. Yeah, it's going to go up. I mean, if uh, Swiss franc is going to depreciate, dollar is going to go up. So that means that USD shift would be somewhere around above 1, 1, 1 1.2, which has never happened, as you can see. Okay, so let's pick some Asian currency, which is actually like a Korean one. They're also holding a trend over here. Can you see it over here? Yes. So they're also holding a, a trend, a breakout trend, which means that it's not, it's actually a secular trend where the theory is sound that 
the US dollar will actually move faster than what it is, what, what it did in 1980s, whatever be the reason. The reason could be maybe because the Fed is not uh, uh, dropping the rates. And we'll come on to the, on that topic when we actually re reach bonds. So, okay. so let's move on to the next currency. Uh, one minute. So, um, one minute. So one minute. So I picked up another currency, which is uh, USD Singapore dollar. So uh, this is again showing you that secular trend that there is a problem. And can you see it? Yes. So it shows you that uh, falling wedge where if there is a breakout, then Asia will also actually join the depreciation uh, bandwagon. So their currencies also will reduce, uh, depreciate quite drastically. So the, the trigger point could be this July. So let's move on to another currency. I so, mean, all these charts were right there uh, for whether the, the market's going to break out or fail. Right it's, there on all something like it's, it's, whole, uh, it's waiting for the right trigger where people will actually blame the uh, news, but uh, uh, it's kind of anticipated. So every currency is actually placed, uh, you know, uh, at a particular point where the, the chances of a breakout is higher. That means uh, the breakdown of most currencies is higher. Okay. Than, um, Perhaps than, it could be the Fed eases, but it's not enough. And then they have, the to get ra they have to so, get radical. Uh, we'll come on to that. Actually, when we see bonds, where the whole retracement was around 61.8, and that's also a cycle where the bonds have actually reduced, uh, come down, uh, and uh, they have made a low in June, July. So that's a like a cycle point where there is a point point where it could reverse. So we'll we'll come on to that chart. Okay. So this is a very interesting thing where everybody says if the dollar actually rallies, the yen also will depreciate quite a bit. But what if it is not? So this is a long-term chart. Can you see it? USD yes. yen. Yeah. This is what is actually signaling. Uh, and everybody knows that uh, there is an inverse correlation between USD yen and gold. So, yeah. uh, so if what if this uh, USD yen actually breaks down something like uh, to 90 or probably I marked that 90 over there. And the next level is around 65. Okay. Okay. What if it breaks out to the upside? So that means most of the yen pairs, what's common between 2008 and now is that most of the yen pairs, that is a Euro yen, GBP yen, Aussie dollar yen, all were depreciating in the financial crisis. Right. And there, there could be a possibility that the yen, USD yen could hit somewhere around 45. So what will happen to the gold? So we'll yeah. come on to that. Okay. Uh, Maybe that's the reason gold is actually going to melt up, not melt down. Like most people think that it's a deflation edge. It has nothing to do with that, according to me. Because in the olden days, when people bought gold, they didn't, they didn't look at inflation. They, but they if you're bullish a dollar, why can't the yen go up? It could, but uh, the statistical evidence shows that the yen could actually make a low, USD yen low, and then it could, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe a central bank action could provide that currency to depreciate dramatically. Okay. But I'm just uh, on the other side for now. I think we're going to uh, go. Uh, and I have been for weeks. So uh, um, if the USDN is going to go up, that means it's going to go above 110. So yeah, that's the pivot where it actually, uh, you know, you had to change. As you say that if you don't change your mind, you have no yeah. change left. Right. So something okay. like that. It's a beautiful looking chart. All of yours are, Ronan. Thank you for this. So uh, uh, these going. are the basic ones. We'll come on to the intermarket relations later. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. So uh, this is a new share. 
Yeah, okay. do dollar so one. What do you want? Yeah. Now, now, this is a very critical thing that from 1982 to 1994, yuan actually depreciated. Yeah. And after 1994 to 2005, just held in a flat line. And then it started appreciating against the US dollar in till December 13, 2013. So that means this time when the yuan depreciates, the dollar will rise, which is what nobody wants. Right. So it, that's also holding at a critical point. This is again a can fan. Yeah, this looks like actually, it could break out to the upside. Uh, uh, would yes. your yellow line be one of the targets, 780? 780. So it's right now 680. That's yeah. approximately what? 30% appreciation. Yeah, that, that would really so, shake up the markets. Uh, it'll shake up Asian markets for sure. Because if uh, China devalues, everybody follows. We have seen that in 1989, 88, 89, where everybody thought that Asian tigers were the big thing. No. But if you really look at it, most of their currencies depreciated dramatically. Take a case of India. Uh, Indian currency was against the dollar around 13.5, around yeah. 1988, 89. It depreciated mm -hmm. something like 36 within uh, three years' time. So that's 60% devaluation. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Um, so I King think, dollar, king dollar, king dollar. So, so if somebody wants a short term uh, dollar, now uh, you want to see, um, let, let's more of the. Uh, short cycle of the dollar so let me show you the screen one minute um okay. just one minute okay you can hear me right yes um, what are these charts one minute just hold on made a lot of charts, but uh, I'm not able to show it properly. One second. Sure. Um, um, okay. So, phew, I've lost the screen. One Go second. back to share. Click okay, the green box. The green share box got on it. the bottom of your screen. I got it. So this is a very extreme short term cycle. Uh, short term cycle where you can actually see um, those who actually look at the break point or the breakdown point or the breakout point. So you can see that 96.4 is the breakout point where you can say below that, the dollar is very, very vulnerable for a big fall, okay? But at the same time, if it tries to melt up above 98.4, then actually it'll start uh, moving faster. And that's when you had to observe that what, what the gold does or oil does. So there is a possibility that gold and oil actually can go up rather than down. But uh, technically everybody observes that the dollar goes up, so the gold has to go down. So uh, we'll actually come, up, uh, come to that. Just a minute. So just move to another chart. So how are you positioned right now? You you flat waiting for these um, triggers? The trigger is uh, around 25th July, and we got to observe gold. If 1437 actually takes out, uh, it's taken out, it would actually rush to 1740 or something like that. So we'll uh, come up with commodities. I'll show you commodities, uh, gold, silver charts. So uh, let, me sh let me open that up. Just one minute. So this is a share. One minute. So I can see. So 
I keep losing that screen. I'm really sorry. So that. it's okay. So you go back to the bottom where it says share again. So, you know, if you stay on the same screen with your charts, you won't have to do this, but now you have to go back to share and reshare. Okay, got it. So this will be a rehearsal for your next interview. Sure. So uh, this, uh, I think this is the first time we are using the Zoom. Yeah. So, um, okay, I think this will be fine. So if I open something, I can see it. Can you see? Uh, yeah. Can you see the chart? No. Oh, not yet. Okay. Now? Probably loading. Oh, okay. Now I see a page Should with I different charts here? on it. Small. Okay. So you could probably just click those and show them to us. Okay. Here's so sure. this is a very extreme short term cycle for the gold. Okay. So gold is actually, this is in a daily time frame to know 1406 uh, around, well, what is the level? Support is around 1392. And that's where you can assume that the trade is going wrong. So there are a couple of times where it tried to actually break that but it didn't sustain above it, okay? So the next time it, uh, actually it breaks down, yes, there is a possibility that it can melt down due to whatever reason. But if it actually starts continuing that pattern, that means the next target will be somewhere around 1480, 1553, 16, 23. It'll just keep going. So that will be the extension wave where everybody will catch up and all these oil stocks will start performing. So uh, I'll show you, you mean, a chart. You mean gold stocks? Yeah, uh, yeah, or gold stocks. So okay. gold and silver start outperforming right. at that moment. So can you see this over here? No. Can you see it? New one? Yeah. Uh, that's the monthly chart. So can you see it? Uh, 1480? Yeah. Okay. So that's where the monthly point where it broke down in 2012. That's that why I'm means... looking to short it. That's 61.8 back from the high exactly. of 1900. But if it actually takes out that, it will <clears> actually <throat> straight, uh, that means uh, if it is taking out 1440, that means uh, Dow gold ratio would actually have broken down something like 17.5, which will come up, uh, will come on to that chart. That's a trend which actually continued from 2011 and it has been from a one way street. So let's move on to the next chart. So this is an RSI where it shows that the next target is somewhere around uh, 1600. So this is uh, my primary signal, which I've actually quoted. So it, this chart is very critical to see what really happened and how much it can move to. Can you see the blue lines? Yeah. So the primary signal was around that uh, aqua line, which is approximately 1337. And uh, that is where uh, the, uh, you can actually see in the 1976 to 1980, when interest rates actually were rising, gold started outperforming. So we could yeah. actually get a similar move because of rise in interest rate and not fall in interest rates. Interesting. So 1337, if it actually reaches 2011 top, that means it has a target of 2520. So you can see it over there on the blue line. That's the blue line, right? Mm -hmm. Can you right. see a dotted blue line? And if it reaches something like 1980 stop, it's somewhere around 4235, 4230. So this is actually a real bull market. You can actually see gold, uh, uh, you know, has broken out. Silver hasn't uh, yet, but if it crosses around 16.5, then uh, there'll be a secular move. So let's move on to the next one. So even uh, the normal RSI is confirming, this is for silver. Mm -hmm. So it's actually 9.810. So if it takes out 16, it's going to go to 23 in, in a rush. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. So this is a similar model chart where it says that silver still is not in a bull market. You can actually see when uh, 1977, 1978, it started spiking. And even in 2000, year 2000, 2002, it started, yeah. you know. So this is actually a trending move. So uh, if by chance, if 4,300 is the value of gold, what should be the value of silver? People will argue that uh, one is to 40. So that means you can actually see the red signal. 
red line, which is on the topmost part, which is around 108. So that comes to around four. Okay, so uh, you would look for the gold-silver ratio then to come in from the 90 range and silver begin to outperform? Hello? I think we lost Ronan. Wow. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah. All right, so, I'll tell you what, Ronan, why don't you show your most show okay. the bond chart and we'll wrap so, up with the bonds. Okay, this is most important. I think uh, you're discussing about gold and silver ratio, okay? So th these are cycles which are from 1975, 1974. So you can see the red lines are always the reversal points. We don't see, see anything you unshared. Okay, okay. Oh my God. One minute. Share. Okay. Can you see it now? Should be coming up. Yeah. There you go. So all the red lines are very critical points of reversals. This is a gold silver ratio. So that means that these are cycles. You can actually divide the time. And you can see that 1980 was a reversal, 1990 was a reversal, then 1998, uh, similar case in the financial crisis, 2008, and now. So July 2019, there is a point where silver will start outperforming. So we know that once 91.2 on the ratio breaks, that's when you have to actually, uh, things will start accelerating. So I'll actually move on to the bond, mark, bond charts quickly. So uh, just one minute. I should have organized myself. Uh, so one minute. So bonds and Daniel. So one minute. Okay. This, this is one chart I wanted to show that it's, uh, it's crude oil, actually. So this, there is a possibility that crude oil could actually go up for, because of war or because of rise in interest rates. You can see the wedge. It's a falling wedge. That means that in the next few years, it could be a very inflationary cycle. So the, 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 the resistance is around 61. Right now, currently, it's at 61. And if it breaks out, 78 is the last stop. After that, there is a possibility that it can go move like what, what it did in 1990s, which is 100, 150, and then 216, which is a long-term top kind of thing. Okay, so uh, let's go on to one last bonds, and then we can actually, uh, we can, one minute. Beautiful, chair. You okay. do some great work. So this is the bond, uh, I think I sent you this. Yeah, this you is did. the yield chart. So this is at a critical point where uh, it, it will decide what's the course next, okay? So uh, if 2.1 actually, which is the current level, it actually holds, there is a possibility that it can actually go back in a hurry to seven, six, seven. But if it breaks down, then the scenario changes. We need to see what, what, what's going on. So the top is 15.84. The resistance you see 3.05, it actually broke down. Anybody could use this chart to actually interpret what's actually happening in bond yields and uh, long-term bonds. So if bond yields, my guess is that the whole rise from 2016 to 3.15, this is 61.8 retracement. So 2.10 or 2.0. That means if this is actually an extension of wave three, it could actually uh, be an inflationary cycle and it could rise very dramatically. So can you see the next screen? Waiting. Just one minute. Okay. Yeah, got it. Uh, okay, so you can actually see at the bottom, the levels are precise. So 2.23 means there is a possibility that this whole cycle, which started in 1982, yeah. could actually, you know, uh, accelerate on the upside rather than the downside. But a uh, majority think that the yields will go to zero and US is going to be another Japan. Probably not. So um, this is one. And this was the chart with, I was showing you a possibility that 
2.0, 2.1, this is a possible path. So if this is an inflationary cycle, that means oil and gold could go up and other currencies could collapse because there is a rush into the US dollar. So it's a very unique scenario where uh, we have to see that what's happening with gold and what's happening with oil with respect to US dollar and yuan. Okay, so I, I can actually show you some uh, intermarket relationships. Uh, uh, okay, this is USD, USD bonds, treasury bonds. So if this is one, so if inflation is gonna rise, that means uh, US bonds could actually break down, not break out. But uh, this is a contrarian view. The channel was maintained from 1982, you can actually see, and it broke down. Uh, the critical point here is around 147. If it actually breaks on, that's the signal that treasuries are going to be dumped and US dollar could rise because other central banks could be actually selling their bonds in order to actually show up their own currencies. So uh, that's the reason that I think that most of the currencies would actually start collapsing faster than what people think. Uh, um, okay. So, so I think we can actually, uh, I, I would like to, uh, uh, probably I will post things on Twitter and actually uh, people who are actually over here can actually ask questions and we can actually take from there. Okay. Uh, is your, do you mainly just trade for yourself? Do you have a service or anything uh, or you I, just want Twitter followers? No, I don't want Twitter followers, but uh, it's something like uh, I do follow uh, uh, international markets and uh, I don't run a service, but if somebody asks, I do actually help them out okay. yeah, because my technical analysis is totally different from what, what's, what's there. Then so anyone. I look for cycles. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but I don't know anyone, but uh, I try to, you know, give a different view and to see what is exactly going on. Uh, and it's not based on certain indicators or something. It's purely based on cycles, which is there uh, in our daily lives. All you have to do is actually look for the turn. So I don't run a service. If somebody asks me certain questions, I would be happy to help them. What a great guy you are and my trading warrior brother and <clears throat> very, uh, you have a unique telescopic view, Ronit. So really appreciate you coming on and, you know, next time it'll probably run a little smoother for you with the technical parts of Zoom, but it was a great job and we appreciate it. And it's going to be a great video for people to really take a look at some macro views and consider some of the events that uh, some of your work is forecasting. So thank you so much for being with us today, buddy. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, Dale. And everybody should watch out on 25th July or 27th July. That's when the real actually uh, moves will start. If the, uh, there right is before a the Fed. Rise, Yes. So because right now everybody argued that uh, the Fed has to cut, so the market had to run up. So every market has been running up. So that's the reason gold also, there is a similarity between 2015 gold rise and now. So if gold is actually gonna break out, that's the signal that there's something going wrong. And you have to watch exactly what is crude doing above 61, because that, that would be a trending move, which will be probably in a year or something like that. So it's a okay. critical point to watch yen pairs too, and especially Euro yen, which I couldn't show, a 120 breakdown would be something similar to a financial crisis in 2008. So I would actually wrap it up. If anybody wants to ask something, they can actually ping me on Twitter. I would be glad to help them. Okay, and his Twitter handle is at R-O-N-I-T 9Q, Ronit 9Q, top trader, Ronit 9Q. So that's a wrap, everyone. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Thank you, Ronit. Uh, Thanks, good, good hunting, and we'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Adios. Look for Ronit's video. You'll have to go over it again. I know I will. Adios. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.